I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight TV, we're diving deep into the world of personal growth with Thomas Ventimiglia. He's the author of an outstanding book. It is called Quest for Your Empowered Self. Thomas has dedicated over two decades to teaching and counseling, guiding individuals through their personal journeys of self-discovery and empowerment. His book is a culmination of this work, offering a comprehensive self-empowerment model that addresses identity, direction, purpose, and strategy. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing this remarkable book. The links are below this interview. Tom, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thanks for having me, Logan. My pleasure. This book contains 56 high-powered strategies and 168 life skill exercises. So it's not only a book, it's basically a workbook as well. You want to give the folks at home an overview to start? Sure. Um, I, I'm actually up to three decades in my uh, teaching and uh, being a professor at the college and uh, working privately with with uh, people with you know with doing therapy and um, the, I really wrote the book based on what worked. So in my first decade of work, I. Uh, you know, a lot of students struggle with anxiety and depression and, um, you know, feeling defeated and not attaining their goals. We have a lot of dro big dropout rate of, at the colleges. Mm -hmm. And privately, when I would uh, work in therapy with people, people had a lot of regret because they weren't getting what they wanted out of life. And so, I, you know, I tried techniques that work and techniques that didn't work. And I thought, why don't I write a book and just put the techniques in there that worked mm. and have only that. And that's how I wrote the book. And then from there, um, I wrote curriculum at the college, uh, at several colleges to get the, to develop a class from the book material. And that class for the last 23 years has transferred as general education credit to all the California state universities. And people say, well, how are you, you going to get a class where students are actually learning skills and learning how to meditate and uh, learn stress reduction techniques and working on themselves and goal setting? And I said, yeah, I got to do it because mm -hmm. most of the classes and most books you read um, are all concept oriented. You read the material, but there's where's the application? Where's the mm -hmm. skill building? And that's why I thought I wanted to write a book where they're actually building skills, completing exercises that go into depth so that they get better at these skills. Well, I think that's what's unique about your book. It's not just a platitude. It actually gives you concrete, hands-on exercises that you can do. Um, and skills that you can build. Let's talk about one, two, or three of those skills that you feel are transformative to people once they learn them. What would you say the first thing to learn is? First thing to find out is who you are. In the book, we, you know, you really discover who you are, where you're going, why you're going there, and how to get there. And that first step is who are you? What is your purpose in life? And it's hard because when students go through high school, they don't get a lot of instruction on understanding who they are, what their main values are, their interests, their personality. What do they want to contribute? What are they good at? Mm -hmm. They don't even give them aptitude to tests to tell them what they're good at. And, um, you know, I talk to a lot of students. They, they have an interest in something. They might be interested in nursing, but they struggle in science. Mm -hmm. So it, it's hard for them. So the the really the first part I'd say is getting to know you and these uh, exercises in the book uh, get students to identify their their values and their personality and how they want to use what they believe in and what they're good at and what they're interested in to create a life that will support that. Yeah, I always use an analogy of planning a trip that you got to realize or recognize where you want to go in order to get there. 
You yes. Know? And so many people don't. There's some people that know by the time they're seven years old that they want to be an astronaut, a doctor, a journalist, whatever it might be. And they're, you know, myopic in their focus and they achieve it. And those people are blessed. But yeah. the vast majority of people, I will say to them when they're seeking career advice from me, if you had a magic wand, what would you be doing right now? Yes. And they, they don't right. have an answer for that. Then how are you going to get anywhere, right? That's right. That's right. And when you decide to pursue it, you do figure it out. Like you said, when you take a trip, you start here, you end here. And most people don't know when you fly on an airplane, it doesn't do a straight route. Right. It goes off track, it corrects, it goes off track, it corrects, it goes off track and corrects. And when we pursue our goals, we're supposed to go off track. And so the idea is when you when you fall down, you get back up, you learn from it, you keep moving forward. And that's part of the the book too, is learning how to um, you know, bounce back develop persistence and resilience and feel good that you are you are progressing and and being falling down is all part of it it's yeah. it's you watch the most famous people on television that have achieved the, the most amazing success and uh they all have stories of falling down and but most people aren't taught that right they think it's it's success all the way and it's not it's not supposed to be exactly that's what i love about self help and success books and empowerment books is that they're a pep talk. You know, sometimes they remind me of things I already know. Sometimes they give me great concepts. I mean, I love listening actually to Tom Brady talk yeah. because when, you know, he was not a natural athlete, he was too tall, he was too skinny. His first game when he got called up to play uh, in the NFL, he lost the game. I yeah. mean, so like you said, life is not an upward trajectory it's it's all a comeback story so That's if you learn right. to come back you're doing great some people however are dealing with bigger challenges than others some have to deal with anxiety some people will have to deal with ptsd tell us a little bit about the principles that you offer the strategies that you offer in your book to help people cope with these issues thank you yeah and, and i find that m most people don't always connect their current day depression or their current day anxiety with things that happened to them in the past. And so a lot of times we had trauma growing up and our, it, it stayed repressed or suppressed in the body. And then we get into adulthood and then it, the body can't handle it anymore. It's gotta, it's gotta get out, it's gotta come out some way and that's the way it comes out. And so I help, the, the book helps you trace back to events in your life that you need to heal. Mm. Because those events created these negative beliefs about yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Um, all these, these beliefs. And so you, when you go through the book, you become an expert at being a prosecuting attorney mm -hmm. and looking at that. Really? You don't think you're smart enough? Well, didn't you graduate from high school? Right. Okay. Well, you really, you don't think you're good enough. Didn't you do this? Didn't you do this? Didn't you do this? And so most people have these negative minds. And um, the goal of the book is to bring truth and more positivity to uh, what those distorted belief systems are. And people that have had trauma, and that, that's most of us from anywhere from on the spectrum of a mini trauma to heavy trauma. And they learn techniques that, that, um, that help heal that. Mm -hmm. And even the big stuff. So in the book, there's a technique called emotional freedom technique, mm -hmm. where you tap on acupuncture points, mm -hmm. urinary bladder, gallbladder, stomach, kidney, and so forth. And uh, the research is very strong on it, healing trauma, mm -hmm. PTSD, depression, and um, they can go to uh, the book as well as energypsych.org and look at the research. And so when I work with students, um, I you create a statement that will help you to see the other side of your negative thinking. Mm -hmm. So if someone th thinks they're not good enough, even though I don't think I'm good enough because my father told me I wasn't when such and such happened, I choose to let that go. My father, you know, he was projecting his own stuff onto mm -hmm. me and I deeply and completely uh, believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And then you tap on these points and all of a sudden it gets to the emotional brain mm -hmm. and to a point where it's like, oh yeah, that that's true. Yeah. Whereas if we just 
think it, 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 it doesn't necessarily happen. Right. And I tell, I tell people, you know, if you were to just, if I told you to come give a speech right now in front of everybody, your heart would start doing this, right? Right. right? And our, uh, our logical brain would tell our emotional brain, you, you know, you're not going to die. Everything's going to be okay. And the emotional brain's going, no, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> so wouldn't it be great to have a technique where you tapped on this point and say, hey, yeah. even though I'm worried that right. uh, I'm people are going to judge me if I don't do well, just like they did in sixth grade when I got up in front of the class, I choose to let that go because I'm fully prepared and I trust I'll have a good speech. And you tap on these points, all of a sudden it's like, ah, the emotional brain gets it then. Yeah. That's great. Those are great affirmations. Uh, it really is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And people who are looking to excel professionally have to realize that all you really need is average intelligence. Okay? That's right. You don't have to be a super genius. Look at any successful person around you. They're not the brightest bulb in the lamp store. They just wanted it more. You know what yes. I mean? That's exactly right. Yeah, you know, that's what I always say. They were Point persistent. People. Yeah, they, they just want it. I said, see the people on TV doing this or that? They're not better. They're not better looking. They're not smarter. They're not anything more than you. They were just focused on their goal and wanted it more than anything else. And that's how you achieve a goal. And I think your uh, book points to that, as well as some really good healing principles as well, which I like. It's it's quite holistic. Now, you've been recognized for your great work, including a Telly Award for Educational Television. Tell us a little bit about that achievement. Yeah. So uh, a p part of doing the work also is using law of attraction work, where you start to visualize what you want in life before it's happened. And um, I remember I did that and I wrote, um, I, I looked at an article and I said, this is, I want to be kind of like this person, a person who inspires people and so forth. And so I read that article and looked at the advertisement and, and thought myself and I would do that in the future. And then I forgot about it. And years later, I, I ended up uh, doing an educational television show on the content of this book, Quest for Your Empowered Self. Mm -hmm. And I did 26 one half hour uh, videos on it that went out to uh, uh, Southern California and it won a Telly Award. And um, when I looked at the advertisement that the that they did on that, it was the same colors, the orange, the browns, the yellows of what I had read earlier when I was trying to uh, visualize that happening for myself. And mm -hmm. I got chills in my, in my body because I, I couldn't believe it happened. Yeah, well, that's it's wonderful. Just... Great work. We're glad that you have this out in multimedia form, that not only in the book, but also in video. Is it, Are those videos still available for folks? Yes, yes. They can go to Palomar College, uh, their educational television uh, department, and access those. Okay, wonderful. Thomas Ventimiglia has written a wonderful book. It is called Quest for Your Empowered Self. He has spent nearly three decades teaching and counseling, guiding individuals through their personal journeys of self-discovery and empowerment. His book is a culmination of this work and it offers comprehensive, a comprehensive self-empowerment model that addresses identity, direction, purpose, and strategy. Contained within the pages of this book, you will find 56 high-powered strategies and 168 life skills. Thomas's proven approach to success has worked for a wide range of individuals. And we're delighted to recommend this book. The links are below this interview. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much, Logan. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford. Thanking you for your time, this time, until next time, on Spotlight.